Wolves can be really annoying sometimes and make you wish you could see over them or through them. Zand, you're not eating my cake, are you? No, no, no cake here, no. Good. Now, your skin can be a little bit like a wool. When you get a medical problem on the outside, it's easy to see it, treat it and watch it heal. But when you get medical mysteries going on inside the body, there's one hospital department you need to turn to for help, the radiology department, because they've got all kinds of cool kit that can actually see inside the body. A bit like this periscope lets me see over the wall. Zand! The new radiology department at Alderhey cost a whopping £7 million. This department x-rays 75,000 patients a year, and more than half of those have their snaps taken on this, a plain film x-ray machine. X-rays let doctors look at your bones. They're like a super powerful version of ordinary light, which can pass through your skin. When they meet bones, x-rays stop dead in their tracks and the perfect picture can be taken. It's not just bones that show up in an X-ray, though. I'm heading to another part of the radiology department to see a different type of X-ray machine. This one is used to study people who have problems swallowing. Nine-year-old Isabel is currently fed through a tube in her stomach as a result of having an operation. She's come to the radiology department today for a video fluoroscopy test to see if it's now safe for her to eat and drink normally. So I'm wearing this apron and it is very heavy because it's made of lead and that protects me from radiation. Radiation isn't dangerous for the patients, but if you get a little bit every day, that could be dangerous. So you wear a bit of protection. I'd have preferred a green one. We're going to give you some yogurt to eat, OK? Isabel's dad feeds her some special liquid which x-rays can't pass through, so it shows up black on the image. Can you see it? What's amazing about it is that you're making, if you like, an x-ray movie, so we can see the liquid going down her throat as a video, and that means we can make sure that it's safe for her to keep swallowing and that none of the food is going down the wrong way. So, Isabel's esophagus is working fine. The fluoroscopy has shown the doctors that it's safe for her to start eating again. Isn't that amazing? After a whole year of being fed through a tube. It's busy in the radiology department today. Down the corridor, nine-year-old Neve is having another sort of picture taken called an ultrasound for a mystery swelling in her foot. Here to do that is Dr. Musa Kalim. The way the ultrasound machine is working is it's using a probe which emits a very, very high frequency noise, such a high pitch that you can't hear it. And those sound waves bounce back differently depending on whether they hit bone or whether they hit muscle or different things. And it's listening for the echoes coming back and then putting those echoes into an image. This area which looks darker than the normal tissues around the bone. So bone is here. So there's something, possibly a splinter, irritating Neve's foot that will require further investigation. Have you given it a name? Jeff. That's a great name. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Zond. Without the amazing radiology department at Alderhey Hospital, the doctors and other experts would have to spend a lot more time guessing about diagnosing people's conditions. But these machines are so powerful, they can see deep inside your body. They could even see a piece of cake inside your stomach. Don't tell Dr Chris! <laughs>《An X-ray is like a super powerful version of ordinary life, which can pass through your skin. When they meet bones, X-rays stop dead in their tracks, and the perfect picture can be taken.》With his X-ray done, Joseph just has to wait calmly for the results. Okay. Whoa, 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 stop right there. Isn't this how you got yourself in this mess in the first place? • Don't worry, the X-ray results are in. • Oh, and it looks like there could be a cast on its way. • He's got a little break just up here. Where, where he saw the bone's not out of place, it's just got a little break across it, and that's why it's swollen. But at least Joseph's earned himself a sticker. What does that say? I have been very brave. And he's come up <laughs> with a cunning plan. If my arm breaks, this one. Yes. I'll have two stickers. Well, your maths is good, but it's probably better to have two good arms than two good stickers. Someone plaster him up before he hatches any more harebrained plans. With a sling on, time for a finishing touch. Another sticker. I should put that, I should put it on there so everyone can see. There you go. Boy, what you say? Thank you. All right, mate, no worries. Phew, and he didn't even have to break his other arm to get it. Bye-bye. Bye. Stop whatever you're doing. I wasn't doing anything. I said stop. 
there's a new patient in the emergency department. Come on, let's but, go. But I... <laughs> Being rushed into Sheffield Children's Hospital is 13-year-old Declan. Looks like he's done something to his leg, Mum. He was training, diving off the three-metre diving board and yeah. he's missed his footing. Declan is a gold medal winning diver. He was at the pool practising his hurdle jump on the three-metre diving board. A hurdle jump? Shouldn't he be practising that at an athletics track, not on a diving board? It's not that sort of hurdle, Zahn. It's a type of dive like this. Is that really Declan? Yes, it is. Wow! Declan is amazing. So how did he end up in hospital? Well, as Mum said, Declan lost his footing and slipped. The board hit him in the shin. Bad board! His leg was bruised, grazed and not the right shape. Ouch! Here to take a look at Declan is Dr Rob Cornford. We're going to organise for an X-ray of your leg find out what the damage is to these bones and then we'll know what we need to do next. All right. Declan is hoping the damage isn't too bad as he's got a big diving competition in a few weeks. Hopefully I'll be all right by then. Fingers crossed, Declan. Dr Cornford takes a look at Declan's x-ray. What's the diagnosis, Doc? You can see this line here where the brain is broken and you can see that there's some quite sharp fragments which look like they're really pointing out quite a long way out of line from the rest of the bone. This is a really serious break. But the team have a plan. They put his leg in a temporary plaster cast to stop the bones moving, and then it's off for a CT scan. This will give a 3D image of his leg to help the doctors decide what to do next. Bottom line, you will need surgery. So with a plan of action, it's off to the ward for Declan to try and get some sleep. We'll catch up with him later to see how the surgery goes. Ouch! Earlier, we met Alex with his bent arm. Let's head back to Accident and Emergency to see how they straighten him out. Back in Liverpool, Alex is in with a broken arm. Really, really old head. And it's bent like a banana. Alex was playing football at school. He was in goal and making lots of great saves, leaping left and right. Then one boy, the strongest kicker on the pitch, took a shot. Alex threw his hands out for a save, and the ball crashed right into his arm and injured it. Ouch! So, Alex is having a procedure to fix that bendy arm. If it's successful, he won't need an operation. First, he's given an anaesthetic to make him sleepy so he won't feel a thing. And the team begin the process of straightening Alex's arm. Dr Vanesh needs to pull the bones apart, then let them join back up again in a perfect fit, just like a jigsaw. First, there's a lot of pulling. We just give a bit of traction. Someone pulled the arms the other side and I pulled it away from the fracture. So we tried and align it together to make it straight. Once they're happy the bones are correctly fitted, the team need to make sure that they stay that way until they heal. So Dr Vinesh fits a plaster cast. Can you move your fingers? Beautiful. After that's done, Alex is sent to X-ray again to check up on those broken bones. New pictures are taken of Alex's hopefully fixed arm. Hey, it doesn't look like a banana anymore. But is it straight enough to avoid an operation? Just spoken to orthopedics, they're happy with the X-ray and you can go home and we'll review you in Fracture Clinic in a few days. Great news! They don't need an operation, no. I'm really happy about it. And on his checkup, it's still straight. A brilliant result. Bye, Alex. Ouch. We're giving you exclusive access to an accident and emergency department. Let's meet our first patient. In Sheffield, accident and emergency, seven-year-old Logan's all bandaged up. What happened, Logan? I put my arm. Oh, how did you do that? Playing football. Playing football? Let's see exactly what happened. Logan was at football camp learning new skills. He can dribble, head the ball and score goals, just like Lionel Messi. Then it was penalties and Logan's turn in goal. He saves it. Brilliant. Up steps the second player. Logan saves again. But why is he holding his arm, Chris? Let's look at that again. The ball came rocketing in. Logan saved bravely, but look at his wrist. It's bent right back. Ouch. 
Here to save the day is top doctor Reddy Ilavala. Hi, Logan. You all right? First, he needs to check Logan's injury. Ow. Ooh, bit sore there. It's very important that there's a good blood supply to the tips of Logan's fingers. Can I just touch your thumb? Is that, is that OK? I can feel it. If he's got any numbness or pins and needles, then uh, we need to manipulate, like, straight away in the emergency department. Once he's happy that Logan's hand has a good blood supply and is not numb, Dr Ilavala sends him off for some X-ray pictures that will reveal the damage. First one, then two X-rays. Another satisfied customer. With the X-rays all done, what's Dr Ilavala's verdict? It's broken in, in two places and it's also gone backwards as well. Ooh, double ouch! Time to uh, break the news. Zand. It, it definitely needs to be, you know, manipulated into place and they might have to put some wires and things like that as well. So Logan has to have an operation to fix his broken arm. But first, it's put in a temporary splint to keep him comfy. All done. Logan's moved to another ward where he'll spend the night. Find out later how he gets on.